Oklahoma State moves up after an impressive win over the weekend. Notre Dame moved down a lot after dropping to 0-2. And the NFL's opening weekend ends with a major injury. That and more upcoming on The Daily O. Good evening and welcome to the first Monday edition of The Daily O. I'm Grayson Singleton here with you tonight with all the action-packed news happening throughout the world of sports. Let's get things started with some local OSU football from the weekend. Oklahoma State ranked 11th in the country, played host to Arizona State, the Sun Devils visiting BPS on Saturday night. Let's get things started. First quarter, Spencer Sanders looking for John Paul Richardson, but is intercepted by Luke so by Kyle Soli, excuse me, halting the OSU drive at the 22-yard line. A promising drive. It was Sanders' first turnover of the season. Let's go to the second quarter. Two drives later, Brock Martin forcing the Arizona State fumble on the rushing attempt, recovered by defensive tackle Tyler Lacey. Lacey getting BPS ecstatic and the fans rocking. Four plays later, Dominic Richardson rushes up the middle, four-yard score. Richardson's second score of the season, and it gives OSU a 7-3 lead. Richardson would finish the night with 131 yards rushing and that touchdown. Let's skip ahead to the following drive for the Cowboys. Spencer Sanders inside the 10, caps off the 96-yard touchdown drive, giving the Cowboys a 14-3 lead. He's now accounted for nine total touchdowns in the first two games of the 2022 season. On to the fourth quarter, Cowboys leading 20 to 17. Sanders to Richardson, back to Spencer Sanders, and then to Bryson Green. The flea flicker results in the 31 yard touchdown. The fans celebrate and you see they're loving it. Cowboys up 27 to 17. The Pokes would add another touchdown and win this one 34 to 17 to improve to two and zero on the season. Here is our own Connor Bergen with the recap of the game. Defense wins championships and also non-conference games. The Oklahoma State Cowboys were able to defeat the Arizona State Sun Devils 34 to 17 Saturday night. The defensive changes from the first performance against Central Michigan to now have been eye-opening for head coach Mike Gundy, showing resemblance from the performance of last year's defensive squad. That's why I said we, I saw some things tonight that, that looked a little bit like that. The Cowboys offense couldn't find its groove following an opening drive field goal by the Sun Devils. Spencer Sanders would get intercepted by Kyle Sully to cap off a dominant first quarter for the Sun Devils. The Cowboy defense stood strong throughout the second quarter. Brock Martin forced a crucial fumble that was then recovered by Tyler Lacey. That was what got the Cowboys offense back into gear. Four plays later, Dominic Richardson rushes up the middle to hit pay dirt as the Cowboys take their first lead of the game and go into the half with a 17-3 lead. Richardson led the charge for the Cowboys, tallying 131 yards from the ground on a career-high 27 carries. Richardson's performance is no surprise to Cowboys offensive coordinator Casey Dunn, who wants to continue featuring Richardson as the lead back of this offense. That's the guy that I, you know, every time that he goes out and takes the field, that's the guy I expect to see. You know, excuse me. Sorry. Um, but he is a, he's, he's a talented guy, and I expect to get him the football. Uh, he's got to be the guy for us. While the Sun Devils put pressure on the Cowboys throughout the second half, Casey Dunn pulled out a creative flea flicker that resulted in a 31-yard touchdown to Bryson Green. That play seemed to be the nail in the coffin for the Cowboys as they would walk away with their 10th consecutive home victory, the second longest winning streak in program history. Coming up next for OSU, they will continue their home stretch as the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions come to town next Saturday, September 17th. Kickoff for that will be at 6 p.m. Reporting from Boone Pickens Stadium, Connor Bergen, Ocali TV. Thank you, Connor. As of yesterday, the Cowboys have moved up in the new Associated Press rankings. They're number eight in the country. Now it's time to look at our player of the game from this past weekend, and it shouldn't surprise you after what Connor touched on, but it's running back Dominic Richardson. Richardson carried the load for the Oklahoma State offense, tallying a career-high 27 carries and adding up to 131 yards on the ground while finding the end zone to get the Cowboys their first score of the game. Let's take a quick break, but when we return, we'll take a quick look at how some former Cowboy athletes performed across the NFL, find out which player stood out the most, and also 
Last Saturday was a doozy in college sports as we dive into the Alabama-Texas fiasco in Austin. And last, we'll take a quick look at the play of the night. So much action, but only one play can be crowned number one. Stay tuned. The Daily O will be right back. My name is James Ramiti. Fired Up Stilly is the name of the business, and I'm one of the owners. We all three met the three owners working as employees at a similar place like this. What I hope for is for everybody to feel welcome, like family. Not only do I want students to feel welcome to come here and study and use our free Wi-Fi, but also I want adults and families to be able to come in. We've built a connection with a lot of people, and you know, Stillwater is a big community, so we just want to invite everybody to be able to eventually make their way through our doors. Well, definitely the T's, I would say. Most people fall in love with them. They just got a great amount of energy, gets you going through your day, and it just kickstarts you to get, you know, everything you need to done. For myself, it would just have to be, you know, being the owner, owning something that, you know, is able to impact other people's lives, and, you know, the way we can affect our community is something that I really have always wanted to do. We love our clients and our customers that come through every day, and we enjoy getting to know them. My name's Kayla. I've been here since the beginning, so four years. Scratch is more focused on farm and mostly made in Oklahoma products, keeping it local. Sustainability is our biggest thing. Um, that's one of the reasons why this place opened. I've been the chef here at Scratch for two and a half years. I uh, started here as a line cook. Our food and drinks are a bit separate entities almost inside the restaurant. So the food is now up to 85% of the uh, products we bring in are raised or grown locally. Uh, it's all based off of things that I grew up eating in southern Oklahoma, the things my grandparents ate. I'm about uh, fresh food, clean food, um, organic food, sustainability, that's all of our thing. From front of house to back of house, we're able to maintain both with freshness. But made in Oklahoma means we get it straight from the farms that are 20, 30 minutes, another little county away. We get it straight from them. Welcome back to The Daily O. Let's start things off with your national headlines. Scott Frost is cashing in on a massive buyout after his dismissal as the head coach of Nebraska. Yesterday, Frost was fired on the heels of yet another one-score loss, this one coming at the hands of Georgia Southern. Frost will cash in $15 million to no longer coach the Cornhuskers, but the buyout could have been cut in half had Frost made it to October. Newly named interim coach Mickey Joseph doesn't have an easy task ahead of him for his first week as the Oklahoma Sooners come to Lincoln for Fox's big noon kickoff on Saturday. Spanish tennis player Carlos Alcaraz defeated Norwegian Casper Ruud to, in four sets to win the U.S. Open title at, Archer, at Arthur Ashe Stadium in Flushing, New York. The 19-year-old Alcaraz earned his first Grand Slam title with the win and will become the youngest world number one in the history of the ATP rankings with the victory. Alcaraz defeated the 23-year-old Ruud 6-4-2-6 7-6 with a 7-1 tiebreak, and then 6-3 in a match that took over three hours. Dak Prescott, the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, will be out for six to eight weeks to have surgery on his right thumb. Prescott left the game late in the fourth quarter last night in the Cowboys' loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Cowboys lost that game 19-3. The Cowboys are expected to start backup Cooper Rush for next week's game against the Cincinnati Bengals, who are coming off their opening loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Moving back to OSU athletics, or should we say former OSU athletes, in this week's Pro Pokes update. The first week had some NFL action of notable Cowboy standouts. Defensive back A.J. Green for the Cleveland Browns had three tackles with a pass deflection that included grabbing a fumble to help the Browns stave off the Carolina Panthers 26 to 24. Speaking of more recent Cowboys, Lions linebacker Malcolm Rodriguez had six tackles, including a tackle for loss against the Eagles. And finally, veteran Emmanuel Ogba of the Miami Dolphins had a monster game against the Mac Jones-led Patriots, having a sack with two quarterback hits, four tackles, and securing an opening season, a season opening win for the Miami Dolphins. And while we're on the topic of OSU, let's take a quick peek at what's in store for Cowboy athletics this week. Starting things off with Cowboy football, it's the battle of two undefeated squads. Arkansas Pine Bluff comes to town this Saturday as the Golden Lions will take on OSU on September the 17th. Kickoff for that game will be at 6 p.m. 
Don't forget, before the game, to tune in to Ocali TV for our pregame show hosted by Dylan Walker and Emma Lightfoot. The pregame show always begins one hour before kickoff. Moving on over to the soccer field, Cowgirl Soccer will play host to Mercer this Thursday. First whistle for that matchup will be at 7 p.m. All right, let's take another break. But when the Daily O returns, college football is off the charts this weekend. We have all the highlights for you to revisit and also our play of the night. Find out which top play will be crowned number one. Don't go anywhere. The Daily O will return right after this. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I went to Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater in 99 to 2004. I've always felt like Stillwater needed more family friendly things to do and we have opened up AR Workshop. We do everything from knitting blankets that can be done in a three hour class and we create doormats and porch signs, the Christmas wreaths with our yarn that we use for the blankets. We also do, um, we just started a new project for gnomes and we've done pumpkins during the fall. But our big thing that we do here are interior signs. Our designs are extremely unique to AR Workshop. Customers come in, it's everything is here for them to do. They create everything. They can be as hands-on as they want. They came in here to relax and have fun and that they are proud of their project that they've made. Ace in the Bowl Salsa started many, many years ago. I was trying to find a recipe to take to a family gathering, and so I started messing around with different recipes, and I took a little bit from here and a little bit from there, and I came up with a salsa that is truly unique. Ace in the Bowl Salsa is an olive oil-based salsa with tomatoes, green chilies, green onions, and black olives. There's no sugar added, it's gluten-free, low-calorie, low-carb, low-fat, low-sodium. So it's a very, very, very good alternative to any snack you may want. As of right now, I'm just looking to be in Oklahoma and having a successful business within the state. If uh, my grandkids could ever take it over when they're old enough, that would be my dream. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I went to Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater in 99 to 2004. I've always felt like Stillwater needed more family friendly things to do and we have opened up AR Workshop. We do everything from knitting blankets that can be done in a three hour class. And um, we create doormats and porch signs, the Christmas wreaths with our yarn that we use for the blankets. We also do, um, we just started a new project for gnomes. And um, we've done pumpkins during the fall, but our big thing that we do here are interior signs. Our designs are extremely unique to AR Workshop. Customers come in, it's everything is here for them to do. They create everything. They can be as hands-on as they want. They came in here to relax and have fun and that they are proud of their project that they've made. Welcome back to the Daily O. Time to dive into some Big 12 football action. Let's send it down to Austin where number one ranked Alabama, the Tide, faced off against the Texas Longhorns. Texas alum Scotty Scheffler, the 2022 Masters champ, and Kevin Durant, we're there to watch the Longhorns take on the top-ranked Tide. Let's go. Alabama gets the first touchdown of the game, both teams with a field goal on the board, when Alabama running back Jace McClellan rips off this 81-yard touchdown run, just breaking away from the entire Texas defense. 10-3 Alabama on top. Now, let's go to the end of the first quarter with Texas in the, in the red zone. Longhorn quarterback Quinn Ewers is tackled by tied linebacker Dallas Turner, falls hard on that shoulder, and he would have to leave the game. The Texas, though, would end would the, on the next play, score the touchdown. Bijan Robinson with a one-yard score. He had 57 rushing yards on the day, and that touchdown to tie the game up at 10. Just before halftime, Texas kicker Burt Auburn misses from 20 yards out. Replay shows that it was probably tipped by an Alabama player. It's 10-10 at half. And then in the third quarter, Texas defensive end Tavondre Sweat gets to Bryce Young in the end zone. 
for the parent safety, but the referees rule it in rule it an incomplete pass. The first controversial play of the game. And then after Alabama takes after Texas takes a six point lead after a couple of field goals, Alabama in the red zone. Bryce Young scrambles to his left, keeping the play alive, throws across his body to Jameer Gibbs for the seven yard score. Alabama goes up 17 to 16. Then Burt Auburn with a minute and a half left in the game lines up. He couldn't make the 20 yard, but he makes this 49 yard field goal. The Longhorns have the lead with under two minutes to play. But then now it was Bryce Young time as as Alabama quarterback. Look at him avoid the sack getting out of there and using his legs to get Alabama comfortably within field goal range as he ducks out of that tackle. And then that sets up Will Reichard for the 33 yard field goal that he would nail to give Alabama the 20 to 19 win. Nick Saban has another victory over a former assistant, this time Steve Sarkeesian and Alabama improves to two and zero, but drops two spots to number three in the AP poll this week. Speaking of the action packed football, how about a major upset in South Bend? The Marshall Thundering Herd head over to battle it out with Notre Dame Marcus Freeman in his home debut against Notre Dame as they get ready to take on Marshall. Let's pick it up in the fourth quarter. Tyler Buckner on the quarterback sneak gets it in for the touchdown. He also will get, will get the two-point conversion as well. Look at him run the option around the right side, untouched into the end zone. Next, pos next possession for Marshall. Kalen LeBourne breaking tackles and some ankles and gains 42 yards on this carry. Tracked down inside the 10 yard line. Now skip ahead to the fourth, to the fourth quarter. And it's, a, and it's another touchdown. This time Marshall taking the lead. And Notre Dame fans getting a little bit antsy now. Tyler Columbia with the touchdown pass. And now Buckner looking to the near sideline, but is intercepted. A 37-yard touchdown return. And Marshall's up two scores. Buckner visibly frustrated. Next possession, Drew Pine in at quarterback. And he's intercepted again. Marshall. Starting to, starting to sense the, up, the upset as Pine now, next drive, hits Matthew Mayer, makes it a little bit closer, but it's not going to be enough. It's the five-yard touchdown to put Notre Dame down five, but the ensuing onside kick is recovered by the herd. Marshall gets the big upset win at number eight Notre Dame, Marcus Freeman is the first Irish coach to lose his first three games after going 0-2 to start this season, as well as the Fiesta Bowl loss. Notre Dame falls completely out of the top 25. Marshall with the 26-21 win. Let's go back to the NFL where the Eagles and Lions were in action. Let's, so let's, let's go over to Ford Field. As the Eagles come to town to open up the weekend. Second and goal for the for the Lions. Jamal Williams stacked up. No, he's not. Breaks a couple tackles into the end zone. One yard touchdown, seven to nothing for Detroit to open up the score. Philadelphia, a couple drives later. Jalen Hurts, option, touchdown. Ties the game up at seven. Hurts had a phenomenal game. Next possession, Philadelphia. Tip pass by Kaiser White, excuse me. James Bradbury, the new acquisition. In his first game with the Eagles, a pick six. Philadelphia now up two scores, 21 to seven. Look at it again, White with the pick. Bradbury with the touchdown. But Detroit would come back to score. DeAndre Swift, sweep play, left in, touchdown, untouched. Detroit cuts the lead in half, 21 to 14. Next drive, Philadelphia. Kenneth Gainwell left for a two-yard touchdown. They've really blown this game open, 31 to 14, but here comes Detroit. They're hanging around. Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown for the four-yard touchdown. 
Line's not done yet. And the, but Philadelphia just continues to keep making it hard. Hurts to Boston Scott on the handoff. One yard touchdown, 38 to 21. That cushion starting to really add up now. Lions, Goff hands off. Jamal Williams, another touchdown. Hope you started him in fantasy because he had two scores this week. Lions only down 10, 38 to 28. After an Eagles three and out, Detroit back on offense. And Goff will hit DJ Chark. What a catch over Darius Slay. Now Detroit only down three, 38 to 35. However, it would not be enough. Nick Sirianni and the Eagles win the opener, 38 to 35. All right, let's take one last break on the Daily O, but when we come back, it's time to finally unveil our top play of the night. You will not want to miss this as one athlete also continues to chase history. The Daily O will return right after this. We would design something, it was set on the counter, and people was either, if enough of them said, you know, this just is, this isn't it, it never made to the line. Dad was excited that they're all original. They were all designed on mom's kitchen table and it gets in your blood after a while. We're very happy that Pamela and Michael have taken over the business and kept the family going. We took the business over in 2017. When we found that it was available, we wanted to keep the legacy of family alive, but it was also incredible products that deserve to be uh, a part of Made in Oklahoma's story. We were a part of Made in Oklahoma years ago, and so it kind of grew as Made in Oklahoma grew. Oklahoma is ingrained into our everything that we did. We've been here most of our life. That's what we entailed our whole business on, was the Oklahoma homegrown feeling. Pecans are staple to Oklahoma. In fact, many of our native pecans come from trees that are older than Oklahoma statehood. My father's the one that got us started into the pecan picking. I was probably 10 or 12 years old and we started off with the one little mechanical picker that you pulled behind a four-wheeler. Then we'd go home at night and we'd clean them on a TV tray. I guess uh, watching my dad work hard when we were young and people started trusting him and getting more and more groves, uh, we just kept growing. Being a, a relatively new and fresh company, we get to sit in the same room with people who have been a part of the Oklahoma economy for decades. It's opened a lot of doors. It's gave us uh, quite a bit of exposure, and I think people, you know, will take a small company like us a little more serious. We're just gonna continue growing as long as our community lets us and uh, our customers keep on buying, and we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shauna here at Where the Buffalo Roam in beautiful downtown Pawnee, Oklahoma. We have a lot of beautiful and unique items for sale in the store, but our number one items are Navajo jewelry, Pendleton blankets, and Consuela. It's a great place to shop, a beautiful downtown, so come see us in Pawnee, Oklahoma. Welcome back to The Daily O. Now it's time to get into our play of the night. And let's send it over to the diamond. Albert Pujols, still chasing history, sends this one to deep right center. Number 697 against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pujols continuing to define the clock at age 42 in his last season. Pujols is now in sole possession of fourth place all time in home runs. He moves ahead of former Yankees infielder Alex Rodriguez. And with 20 games to go for the Cardinals, Pujols has the opportunity to join Barry Bonds and Hank Aaron, as well as Babe Ruth, in the 700 career home run club. Now let's go back to the gridiron and to the pros with the NFL. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to the Lone Star State and Jerry World to match up with the Dallas Cowboys for Sunday Night Football. Tom Brady, the oldest quarterback to start a game in the NFL. 
But we're going to start with Dak Prescott here, trying to get the ball to Noah Brown, but it's picked off by Antoine Winfield Jr., who takes the ball back inside the Dallas 30. Prescott's first interception of the year. Ensuing drive, however. Brady trying to get it into the end zone. Micah Parsons having none of it. It's his second sack of the game and the second time that the Cowboys hold Tampa out of the end zone after getting inside the 10. Now, Tampa up 9-3. Brady looking for more. Has Julio Jones. Yeah, he still can play. 48-yard gain will lead to another Ryan Suckup field goal. And Tampa takes a 12-3 lead in the, into the break. Third quarter. Bucks still up 12-3. Mike Evans with a one-handed grab on the back shoulder throw. He beats Trayvon Diggs. Look at that grab on the play. Just only needed that one hand. 19-3, Tampa Bay up. Now in the fourth quarter, Dallas trying to mount a comeback, but twice Dak Prescott's hand is hit by defensive end Shaq Barrett. He would have to leave the game with an injury, and we find out later he's going to have surgery on that right hand. He is out six to eight weeks. But for Brady and the Bucks, you see frustration for head coach Mike McCarthy. For Brady, it's an easy win. Tampa wins this one 19-3, and Brady is now 6-0 in his career against the Dallas Cowboys. Before we let you guys go tonight, let's review once again your top national headlines. We start off with Scott Frost cashing in on his buyout after his dismissal as head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers on Sunday. Frost was fired after losing yet another one-score game, this time against Georgia Southern. Frost is going to pocket $15 million to leave Nebraska, but his buyout could have been cut in half had he just made it to October. Spanish tennis player Carlos Alcaraz defeated Norwegian Casper Ruud in four sets to win the U.S. Open title at Arthur Ashe Stadium in Flushing, New York. The 19-year-old Alcaraz earned his first Grand Slam title with the win and will become the youngest world number one in the history of the ATP rankings with the victory. Also, Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott out six to eight weeks like we just mentioned. He's going to have surgery to stabilize and repair his right thumb. He left the game late in the fourth quarter last night in the Cowboys matchup with the Buccaneers, which the Cowboys lost 19-3. to And that'll do it for this Monday edition of the Daily O. Thank you for tuning in tonight, and be sure to check back tomorrow. Emma Lightfoot will have you covered with everything you need to know in the sports world. For the Daily O, I'm Grayson Singleton. Have a good night, everybody. hopes are when folks drink our water is that they'll drink it for a few days and find out the difference. They'll start feeling better because there's been no chemical in our water. There's a list of good things that we have. We don't have any bad things in it. I see the future of divine water as being worldwide, which will bring outside dollars into the state. It means a lot to me because I started it, I guess, and our family started it. You may have been to casinos at some point in your life, but do you really know the truth behind the game you're playing? And the casinos were very polemic or very uh, controversial when they came out, but the truth was that's all the federal government gave us. Casino is owned by the Chickasaw Nation and has roughly 600,000 square feet of dedicated gambling space making it the world's largest casino. It contributed massively to the Chickasaw Nation posting a net revenue of $1.4 billion for the fiscal year of 2017. Local has a name, local has a face, local has a flavor. The Made in Oklahoma Coalition.